everybody, it's the best time of the week. Time for me to speak about all of the ant keeping that we so desperately seek. Last week we talked about the care and maintenance of semi-claustral species. Well this week we're going to bounce back from learning, back to a little bit of entertainment and excitement. We're going to be moving a new colony into the Miantic's ant room. They finally got big enough to be put into a nest and we're going to have one fun time making sure it happens for all of us to see. Let's jump into it. My Antics family, I am proud to introduce to you, or should I say reintroduce to you, our Campanatus festinatus colony. A magnificent yellow desert species that the last time we saw only had about five workers and a small pile of mature brood. Since then, they've kind of been pushed to the wayside, just ever growing in the background of the Miantics videos, forever waiting for the day that they get their fame, glory, and a cherished name from the Miantics community. Now that that day has finally come, I am ecstatic to finally put them in a nest for the first time, see how they go along this challenging route to finally moving out of their test tube and see how they adjust in the couple days to come. We're also going to need a name for these ladies, so get your thinking caps on, cause it is time to rumble. It's amazing guys, it's only been about a minute since I've attached them to their new outworld and nest and it seems like they're already exploring it to the fullest and the scouts are taking full advantage of the new range of area that they have in the vortex nest. I bet in the next little while they will discover everything there is for them to find. Their water, their new stomping grounds, their new digging and outworld and they'll probably be all moved in by the next time we check on them. For now though, we're going to give them some peace and quiet and see exactly what happens when we check up on them tomorrow. Before I call it a night, I will be attaching them to the chain of the heat cord. I'll be putting them in a light to dark sequence so they move out of their test tube and I may even add a little bit of honey in their outworld. The next day, we come back to find their test tube completely empty, with only a couple of scraps to remain to show that they were even in this test tube to begin with. I believe they've all moved in, and now it's time to see exactly where these little girls are and how they're adjusting to their new nest. There they are. Awesome. Let's zoom in and see what they're up to. It looks like they've really gotten into the blue honey that I left for them yesterday. You can see their gasters have started to turn a greenish blue color. 
It looks like most of the colony and the queen are over here on the bottom half of the vortex nest, but it also looks like we have some workers over by the heat as well, tending to the brood in a warmer area so the brood can increase their uh, speed to worker. Let's see here. There we go. Oh wow. They look even bigger than they did in the test tube. That's so cool. It looks like these little girls are going to do just fine in their new vortex nest. I can't wait to see how big they get in the next couple of weeks. I also am excited for the name that you guys will choose for these ladies. It's always something epic, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really interested to see exactly when they're going to find the middle, the most important part of the nest, and the safest place to be an ant. Jumping back into their outworld, we just placed a freshly killed baby roach and two flies to see if they will forage for the first time for protein that's not put in front of them in their test tube. The trap has been laid. Let's wait patiently and see if we get any action for this offering of greatness. As expected, a baby ant, or should I say, a new worker, has finally reached the outworld port where she is now sitting, ever vigilant to see if there's any danger around her. She's new to the, to the neighborhood and quite skeptical. She doesn't really know if anything could possibly scare her in this area, and she's quick to scatter around. Remember, everywhere that ants go, they lay pheromones down. So if, if she was to walk this path a second time, she would know exactly where she was for the first. It's almost as if my voice scared her. I'm going to be a little bit quieter and will continue to monitor her until she finally finds her treats. She seems to be carrying sand around back to the nest. That must be how this large pile of sand got to the left side of their nest port. So maybe she's not interested in eating right now. It would have been a cool sight, but regardless of all that, I believe that we're going to have a lot of great times with these little ladies coming up in the future. Let's take one last look and see if we can figure out where they're putting that sand. Ooh. Look at these big ladies. They're gonna do just fine, guys. As an official invite to them from me, Welcome to the family, you little ladies, and many years of happiness to come. Well, Myantics family members, with our fourth official colony in the Myantics ant room, things are getting too spicy for the pepper. <laughs> I, I was watching American Dad, D don't mind me. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're looking forward to what our Campanatus Festiatus looks like in a couple weeks. And most importantly, I need you guys to think of some great epic names for these little ladies. They're going to get big quick. I'm sure they're going to be a big part of the ant room in the upcoming years to come. And I want somebody to pick the perfect pinpoint name for them. So we have something to refer them by and their name will echo through the ant keeping ages. You all have a wonderful night, and remember, forever and ever and never forget, happy ant keeping.